These are some of the incredibly fun power-ups I've added to my game this week, and I designed them to be really cool because I'm sick and tired of games that have the lamest upgrades in them. Now in order to make my weapon upgrades really interesting, I had to go to the drawing board to come up with some crazy ideas. But how did I determine which upgrades to include and which kinds of abilities people will actually care about? Well I'm glad you asked, because today I'm going to be answering the question of what makes a power-up interesting and compelling to use, while I implement new power-ups and upgrades into my own indie game. And I won't spoil them yet, but my ideas for power-ups definitely got more interesting as I was developing them, and I'm saving my favorite one for last, so let's jump into it. The first thing I did was brainstorm a million different ideas for power-ups, and I began to notice that these naturally fell into a few broad categories. Most of them were weapon modifiers, which makes sense because my game is about tanks shooting at each other, so being able to change how or what you're shooting at makes a lot of sense. The other broad category was for player modifiers. Some examples of these were increasing player speed, giving the player a shield, or turning them invisible. I was thinking about the power-ups in Diddy Kong Racing. They were pretty lame. You had a speed boost, very original for a racing game, basically a banana peel ripoff from Mario Kart, uh, rockets that you could shoot, and a shield to protect you from rockets. And these were fine, I guess, but compare those upgrades with what you would find in a game like Boomerang Foo. They have amazing power-ups, like teleporting to where your boomerang is, transforming into an object in the environment, being able to dash through walls, and even spawning a decoy version of yourself. Now those are some good power-ups. So let me show you some of the power-ups that I decided to add into my game. First, I'm going to skim past the really boring ones. I added power-ups that will give the player an extra extra bullet to shoot, one that speeds up player movement, one that gives each bullet an extra ricochet, and a few others that are similarly not inspiring. But the first good upgrade I added was landmines. The concept for this one was really simple. The player can use their secondary action button to deploy a landmine underneath them. It spawns in, takes a second to activate, then if someone gets too close, it has a short timer, starts blinking, and kablammo. I also added the ability to shoot the mines to activate them, and made sure that they exploded if they took damage from another landmine, which allows you to daisy chain them together, which I thought was a fantastic idea until I realized that I never set the cooldown period for enemy bots, so they just laid a million of them in a row, which fried my computer's processor and froze Unity. The next two upgrades that I added were already in the game, but I moved them into a different action slot so they didn't replace your primary attack anymore. And those were the explosive bullet and the triple shot power up. And those are pretty self explanatory. This bullet causes an explosion on impact, and the triple shot spawns in three bullets at varying degrees away from the player. But this next power up was really fun. When you activate the ability, it spawns a wall in front of the player. It's really fun to play with because not only does it provide immediate cover from enemies trying to attack you, but it can also be used to change the environment and block players from going somewhere. It didn't feel quite right when I was testing it initially, and I realized that if I added a little line indicator that shows where the wall will spawn, it becomes much more intuitive to use because you feel like you have more control over where to spawn the wall. Now for this next power-up, I felt obligated to include it, even though it is a cliche ability, and that's to add a shield to the player. It does what you expect. It absorbs one hit before disappearing, but it's not permanent. The player can activate the shield whenever they want, then it stays active for a few seconds before it automatically disappears, and the player has to wait until the cooldown period before they can throw up their shield again. Nothing fancy, but like I said, it's probably necessary. But this next power-up I'm very excited about. It's not my favorite upgrade, but it is really fun to use, and I call it the deployable turret. When activated, a hole appears in the ground, a turret pops up, and it starts surveying the environment in front of it. If it sees an enemy within focus, it starts shooting at them automatically. It's a really fun piece of equipment to use to lay down cover fire while you skirt around the edge of a level to try and flank other players. And last, but certainly not least, we have my personal favorite power-up. It is the most fun to use, and it greatly increases the complexity for battle tactics during gameplay. And here it is, the teleportation projectile. The concept itself is very simple. Activating the power-up will shoot out a unique type of projectile that acts like any other projectile. It will fly through the air and ricochet off of walls, but if you hit the secondary action button a second time, the player gets automatically transported to the projectile's location in a plume of smoke. And it is so fun to use. Suddenly you have an entirely new way to traverse the battlefield, and I found that changing the means of locomotion in games is one of my favorite things as a player. I'm still trying to balance how long the cooldown should be for this ability because it's really fun to use with a short cooldown period, because you can quickly jump around the map and get behind enemies very quickly. So now, I want you to be the judge. Are these power-ups interesting to you? Do you have any better ideas for power-ups that I can add into the game? Something that I'll dive into in my next video is how players actually acquire these upgrades, and I'll give you a hint. It has to do with collecting coins on the 
the battlefield. And before I sign off of this video, I have a quick announcement. I just wanted to let you all know that I'm working on my own games and YouTube videos full time now, so you should be seeing a lot more stuff from me in the coming weeks. If you want to support what I'm doing, I would be truly honored and extremely grateful if you would consider signing up to become a patron on Patreon. Huge shout out to Schwa and Aramis, who are my first two patrons on there, and we are having a great time chatting it up in the patron-only Discord channel. But that's it for today. Thanks for sticking around, and I'll see you in the next one.